I didn't progress much my first 30 years of guitar playing. If you're continuing to learn guitar late in life, this video will help you improve playing riffs and licks around the chords that we use all the time. I'll break down this overlooked technique coming right up. So basically for years my guitar playing was sloppy and I did not have control of these strings. Check this out. techniques in these three tunes will help transform your guitar playing. Let's break it down. So for many years I did not pay attention to any kind of muting with the right or left hand and both of them are so important. Most of the techniques here are fairly simple but they come alive if you can mute with your right hand just a nice chunky rhythm. I get control over that by resting the palm of my hand just, just slightly on the, on the bridge here. Just, just barely touching the strings on, on, on the low strings for this little groove. But I, I do it all over here. But also for the left hand, I'm really just hitting these top couple strings, muting everything else with the, my first finger here. Just... <laughs> The other four strings are muted, uh, and, and you, you can kind of hear that, but it gives it that percussive sound. Now without, without the muting, I, I, I actually don't have any control when I have my hand up in the air here. I, for me, I really need to rest my my arm here on on the guitar and on this bridge. I, I and sometimes I'll I'll let up a little if I'm really strumming something, but muting is so important in any style of guitar playing. So we're we're just using a, a C, basically a C power chord, B flat, and then an F chord. And then we're just taking your, your pinky here and on the 12th fret from 10, 10 to 12, you just go back and forth, ringing out this, this E string. It, it's a lot, when you, you get that muting down, it, it just gives it that percussive sound and continue on. And the same goes as you're, as you're creating some lead fills Keep that thought in your mind. You don't want strings ringing that you're not using. So I'm hitting that, that low note there on the 8th fret of the E string and then hitting, it's actually a C7. 
So 12 on the G, 11 on the B string, and then 12 on the E string. Just a piece of a C7. Just down, up, down, up. Kind of looking at a piece of the of the B flat minor pentatonic. So you're barring here in the eighth fret on the G and B strings, and then barring on the sixth fret of the same strings, and then hammering on to seven on the G. going to the F chord. Actually, F7 is just taking this down a whole step there. And then that same lick in C minor pentatonic. having a sense when I'm hitting something like this I want to have the freedom to hit all maybe even touch some other strings but I'm always muting this E string as I'm doing it because I just lay my fingers a little flat there and I'm always touching with one of my three fingers here I'm touching this A string So I can hit, and then up here I'm muting with my thumb. So I can hit all the strings and give it a really aggressive sound. I'm hitting all the strings. And just letting ring out what you want to ring out. This is not an easy task, but it will level up your playing, I promise you, work on this a little bit every single day and it will become second nature. I My playing was so sloppy before I started really thinking about what I was doing and had, you know, other strings ringing, even open strings at time, it, and it just doesn't work like that. Doesn't sound good. So moving on to You Shook Me All Night Long. <laughs> The open D is ringing through this whole thing, and we're just using, basically it starts on a G chord, but we're just using the top two strings here on 7 on the G, 8 on the B string, and letting that open D ring. And to get that sound, you're sliding from the D up to the G. And that D ringing through the whole thing. Let me play this really slow. So just really going around this G chord here, using your pinky to go from 8 to 10 here on the B string. And leaving this bard in the seventh fret, the, the G and B strings. D. Then take that second finger off. Now you're hitting the open D and second fret with that A, A note there. And then just a slight bend on, on three of the D string. And then three 
beat of four. One more time, slow. really break it. Again, the key is slightly muting here and slightly muting here. Just have control over those strings and it will make any technique just, just really open up the fretboard and make it come alive. So another classic tune is LaGrange by ZZ Top. He uses a lot of great techniques in here. Some hybrid picking. If you don't know what that is, just pick and finger. Both. And this time we're riding the open A string with an A chord here. Two on the D and then two on the G string. Check out my right hand. I'm using the pick and my just my ring finger and middle finger here I like to use. So I hit the A string with the pick and then pluck up on the other two strings. Check this out super slow. get this technique down it opens up a whole new world for you with control over these strings but many rock players use a hybrid picking so we're just we're just riding there so I'll just play the single notes first because you're just going up to five on the D and then five on the G whole time you're you're riding this this open A string with a pick. Do it slow till you have that groove and then you you, you won't regret taking the time to learn the way he fingers that. And even as, as uh, Billy Gibbons goes into a lead, he really has control over these strings. Hours of fun there. If you get a backing track with, with that groove on it, you can let loose on some of these. Really just running from low to high on the A minor pentatonic here. Just a, a simple sequence. So let me do that sequence real slow. You can use whatever fingers are comfortable for you. That was a stretch doing that with the first and third. So on the E string, five, three, five, three on the A, five, three, then on the A string, five, three, five, then two on the D, five, two, on the D string, five, two, five. G string, two, five. G string, two. And that's just a turn around to go back to A. Just a half bend on five of the G string. Release. 
So the, a key to this, once you get it up to speed, is, is muting with your right hand here. You can bend down or up. And continuing with that groove in mind. So we're just sliding up, just using the A minor pentatonic scale, sliding on a G string 9 and 8 on a B string. A lot of times Billy Gibbons uses his middle finger. For that second string, pick. Pick and then using your finger, pluck up. That's a great double stop. Another one is uh, just barring the G and B strings on the fifth fret. Back to the root note in the seventh fret that, on the D string. And then barring seven on the G and B. I'm getting that sound by plucking up with these two fingers, the middle and ring finger. Check it out. So to get that rolling fast, a metronome helps hugely, but again, alternate. And also you can use that hybrid picking for that turnaround at the end. And the fifth fret of the D strings is G note. And then walks down to four, three, and then the A chord. You're pedaling this A note at, on the E string here in the fifth fret. I, a lot of people play this different ways. This is not exact science. I've just seen him do it live. He just goes back and forth. Really, I, I didn't even turn down or anything. It sounds quieter because I'm really choking it out with this muting. I can't stress enough how a good muting technique can transform your guitar playing. I felt like a long time beginner because I sounded like one. I, I, I knew a lot of chords, uh, the pentatonic scale, I knew it all up and down the fretboard, but I, I had no real control over what I was doing so it just sounded sloppy. Try to get control of these strings. You won't regret taking the time to do it. Thanks so much for hanging out with me, and hopefully I'll see you on the next one.